And this is going to be a rough two-week period. As a nation, we face a difficult few weeks. Our goal, which I believe we can accomplish, is to get the hotspot places, the New Yorks, the New Jersey, and help them to get around that curve. But as importantly, to prevent those clusters of areas that have not yet gone to that spike, to prevent them from getting that spike. And the answer to that is mitigation. Two weeks of pain, and that's what President Trump and his coronavirus task force are warning us. Officials are also warning the number of dead could top 240,000, even with social distancing. Hospitals, as we know, already overwhelmed. So what will the situation look like over these next tough two or three weeks? I want to bring in board-certified family physician, Dr. Jen Connell. Dr. Connell, uh, you know, I looked at some of the other modeling out there very similar to this uh, that suggests maybe April 16th could be something of a high watermark where we have 2,600 people in this country announced dead from the coronavirus. And I guess the thinking is that somewhere after that, we begin to see fewer increases. And we hit that peak in that so-called flattening. Is that how you think it may work out? Well, that's what uh, many of the models are actually showing. You know, uh, last night in the press conference, Dr. Burks went through uh, the modeling and sort of showed us what the trends could look like. We heard numbers of anywhere from 100,000 to 240,000 deaths potentially with this modeling, even with mitigation efforts. And yes, um, the apex is sort of around April 16th, the next couple of weeks. Uh, Charles, we have known that uh, and suspected for a while that it was going to get worse before it gets better. And that's what these models are predicting. Um, I do want to say, though, that there is hope because we still um, we can affect this greatly. If anything, I feel like these models are even more of a reason to really forge ahead and doing those things we know we need to do, like social distancing, hand washing, and, and things of that nature. Yeah, I, I agree with you. If someone uh, hadn't been taking this seriously up until this point, certainly after reading or watching last night, they are. Uh, to that point, also, it's always been said that uh, one of the biggest issues here uh, was the three problems we had. Obviously, the health of our society, the health of our economy, but also the health of our medical system, that we could not overwhelm it. That's running on a parallel uh, uh, track as well, where I'm reading April 15th, 16th. is the point where we get where we run out of things. So, right. uh, you know, it, it, it does add an extra sense of urgency, doesn't it? It, it does, and I, it, that's actually one of the, the the biggest problems with this model. Not only the fact that we're having deaths, period, because we know any death is 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 a death too many, but also as we have more people becoming ill and sick, which is what these models are predicting, we also have more people going into health into the healthcare system, requiring ventilators, requiring beds, requiring ICU beds. And as you accurately said, these models are predicting that we will overwhelm our capacity. It's one of the reasons why you know many of our state leaders and, and the national leaders have been calling on additional supplies. Um, as a health care provider, I'm a family physician, I'm still seeing patients, although via telemedicine right now, um, you know, we're talking about the lack of personal protective equipment that we're experiencing now in hospitals. If this is what's happening now, imagine what might happen in a couple of weeks when we actually exp uh, expect these numbers right. to be much higher. So the, the need and the request for the ventilators and for all the machine and, and all hands on deck, this has to happen now. Um, you know, something that Anthony Fauci Charles mentioned uh, during the press conference, he said, he said about the numbers, you know, yes, we need to anticipate these numbers, but we don't need to necessarily accept them as inevitable. We certainly hope that these numbers are not inevitable, that we will be able to sort of beat this curve, but we need to plan for it. And, and that does make me nervous with, with the numbers that we have now in terms of beds right. and stuff and equipment and what we projected could, could need. Dr. Cottle, you know, it also seems like uh, the medical industry, particularly doctors, Starting to change their tune just a little bit on non-medical workers wearing masks. Uh, you know, initially uh, I was told I didn't need one. Uh, you know, and then it looks like you know maybe we do. Certainly, certainly that's what we're hearing from Scott Gottlieb and others these days that everyone should be wearing a mask. Yeah, it's such a change in tune. I think I was on your show back in you know January, February, March. We were talking about this before saying, no, people who are asymptomatic should not be wearing masks. I was saying it too, just like the rest of the world. And it does look like the CDC is in discussions to reevaluate whether that recommendation still stands today. I think one of the ideas that's driving the reconsideration of this principle or the recommendation is this idea that 
Uh, we, we think that a number of people who are spreading coronavirus may actually be those who are asymptomatic, meaning they have no symptoms, but they're spreading it. They don't know they have right. it, and they're spreading it through upper respiratory droplets. Remember, masks are intended to keep uh, our stuff to us, meaning if you're sick, it's to not get other people sick, not the other way around. So that's one of the reasons why it's it's sort of being reconsidered that, you know, maybe there's a lot of asymptomatic spread that we could um, uh, mitigate with these masks. However, I should say, Charles, this cannot and should not be at the expense of masks for healthcare providers. We are not talking about the masks they use. Um, and I think my colleagues would agree with me about this. And the other thing is it doesn't minimize the rest of the mitigation efforts we need to be putting into place. We still have to wash our hands and social distance and do all of those things we've been talking about all along. Well, I appreciate your help through all of this. And I think there's been something of a learning curve for everybody. Dr. Cottle, thank you very much. Thank you.